What's good, Commanders fans? So some quick updates here. Um, Brian Robinson is being placed on the NFI list. So this is per Ian Rappaport. He's going to miss at least the first four games of the season. Could be back week five um, against the Titans, just like Chase Young could be back. We'll see. Um, he's just fortunate, you know, um, for that bullet not to hit his any ligaments or tendons or anything like that. It's just a blessing that that did not happen, that he had a, a full – he's able to recover – from being shot twice, you know, so it, it's just a crazy situation. But that is it's, it's somewhat good news that he possibly could return by game five. So uh, Ian Rapport says no one is rushing Brian Robinson. He won't be on the field until he's ready. But considering the original thought after he was first shot, this is an incredible outcome for sure. So it, it is. It's, it's like a miracle. It really is. It's crazy. Um, so he'll be on the reserve non-football injury list after he was shot twice while being the victim of a robbery. Sources say this takes the pressure off him to recover. Within the first four weeks, no timeline, but a chance he's ready by week five. So it's just a wait and see approach, man. Um, somebody else brought up when Andre Blatch for the Wizards got shot uh, before the season two in, in D.C. So it, it's just crazy. And it's crazy. I mean, crazy stuff happens everywhere, but unfortunate stuff like this happens in D.C. too often, too many times. And there was a player from the Vikings who got shot, who uh, was a local guy, went to high school in, in the D.C. area as well. He played for the Vikings or something like that. He got shot, too. Um, and he recovered, thank goodness. So thank, thank the Lord. But, um, yeah, so Brian Robinson, I mean, you look at the running back room, Antonio Gibson, he's a good back. I know we give him some, a hard time, but this, this is an opportunity for him to redeem himself, to hang on to the football, show that he can be a lead back, uh, a weapon as well. Of course, Scott Turner's just got to use him as a weapon too. um, spread the carries with JD McKissick, John Williams. Um, if they need to call up Jared Patterson, you know, whoever's ready, they just got to be ready. They got to step up and be ready with B Rob being out. Um, until he comes back this year, I think I think he will come back this year. It's just I don't I don't know for sure, but I, I do think he's I think because he looked in good spirits, you know, when he brought in the Oreos to the facility doing his rookie duties, he just looked in good spirits, like he like he really really wants to get back on the field. So um, just being optimistic with that, I would love I would love to see him play, and I know he wants to get back on the field too. But you know, the the most important thing is that he's alive and well. So um, in other news, uh, Ron Rivera signed David Mayo, bringing him back. I'm not surprised by this move at all. Maybe he could have gone off to AJ Klein. He still could, or Joe Schobert, guys like that. Um, Kevin Pierre Louis, but just we all know how Ron makes moves. He's a very predictable guy. He's a very old school guy. Like D'Angelo Hall said, he's a very old school coach. He only likes to sign people that he's really familiar with for the most part. I know he signed other guys from other teams like Will Jackson um, from other rosters. I know he's done that, but for the most part, he really has probably 70, 80% of his signings have been former Panthers. I'm not even making a joke or joking around, uh, but they really have been. And, and it works for some people, some 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 coaches it works where they only sign their guys. Some coaches it hasn't worked out. You look at Matt Rule, a lot of his signings are, were guys that went to Temple University. That's what he, hirings and signings. They, it's, a, it's a good old boys league. They only want to sign guys that they're familiar with and that they're comfortable with. And this, this is just a Ron Rivera move. It's the Ron Rivera way. That's what he's done for the past two and a half years or three years. And he's been here, so it's a predictable move. A linebacker room, John Bostic, David Mayo, slow linebackers, old school linebackers, very slow, can't cover anybody, uh, can can barely cover a snail, slow as a snail type linebackers, but they're smart. They can run an offense, and they're they're another voice of the coach, and that's what they want, somebody who can line up and, and, and get the players lined up in the right spot. So I do – Bostic's going to start, man. Some people are saying John Bostic's not going to start – I think he's going to start, but now they, they don't usually play three linebackers. They like to play the three safety sets with that Buffalo nickel and whatnot. That's what they like to do. And they, you know, last year there was a stat that showed they only played two linebackers at a time. So we'll see. It could be Holcomb and, and, J and Jamin Davis starting. And then if they do three linebacker sets, of, of course, boss is going to be out there. But I just hope it's not like last year where they barely played Jamin Davis sometimes and they would play David Mayo over Jamin Davis or play Bostic over Jamin Davis. So we got to see what the young guy can do and develop. So, that's my thoughts on that. I'm not going to get too upset about them signing these guys. Like I said, they just they just don't really take too much stock in the linebacker position anyway because they they feel like, you know, they they can either do that 5-2 defensive front or, you know, the Buffalo nickel. So that that's their thought process. That's their thinking uh with the defense. So the defense is concerning. Not a lot of depth. You look at the cornerback depth, you know, two two uh basically basically a rookie in the Tyreek uh pickup from PG County and uh, play for the Niners, and then uh, Wild Goose is basically like a rookie too, honestly, in the amount of games that he's played in the NFL, um, late round draft picks. And then uh, they brought back Corn Elder on the practice squad and then Danny Johnson. So 
that's the makeup. And then Curtis Hodge is the tight end that was placed on injury reserve. So those were the corresponding moves to uh, bringing back David Mayo and signing John Bossy. So that's your linebacking core right there. All right, you guys, so you guys let me know what you guys think. Thank you for tuning into the Elite Channel member stream last night. Had a blast with you guys. Hell to the Commanders. Peace.